defiance on the streets of Surf City today, the first day of the governor's orders to close Orange County beaches. Attorneys for the cities of Huntington Beach and Dana Point have gone before a judge in Santa Ana this afternoon. They were asking him to stop the beach closures here in Orange County. Now, the judge did not immediately issue a temporary restraining order, but instead told these cities and the state's attorney to file briefs and come back to court May 11th to argue this issue. The Constitution is not conditional. Open it up right now. Hundreds demonstrated on Main Street and PCH in Huntington Beach this afternoon, clogging traffic and waving flags and signs. Open the churches, open the restaurants, free up the beach. Free up the beach. It's one of several protests in California organized by a group called We Have Rights. I'm here because I want our salon open. I think everybody is essential. Everybody's job is essential. I want to know why or what the science is behind closing the beaches in Orange County, but not the beaches in San Diego County. Why is it any different? The lockdown needs to stop. We need to open up the economy. You can't have a country of everybody hiding at home. For several hours, the crowd jammed the sidewalks, ignoring social distancing near the shuttered, iconic pier. The call was for California to reopen. Officers from several agencies, including mounted units, helped keep people out of the street. The May Day event was planned before Governor Newsom ordered all Orange County beaches closed, but the controversial move became a hot button issue at the protest, which was held steps from the sand. Police Chief Robert Handy says it is not going to be this way tomorrow. The signs haven't gone up yet to announce the beach closure. That is going to happen tonight. Barricades are also going up. Tomorrow, people could be cited, according to the police chief, or arrested if they don't comply. More states are starting to get back to business now with nearly three dozen, at least partially reopening between today and the end of next week. 15 states will remain under those strict stay-at-home orders. This is Lenox Square. It's typically one of the busiest malls here in Metro Atlanta, and retailers are hoping to recapture some of that energy once the mall opens on Monday. I'm just so happy that we're getting to the start of the end of this. Across the country, 34 states are either loosening restrictions or have announced plans to do so. Among the most recent, Texas, where restaurants are welcoming hungry customers with limitations. You'll get a good meal, but you're going to stay healthy because we are practicing everything for the good health of everyone. A similar story in neighboring Oklahoma. It is official. All non-essential businesses can reopen in Oklahoma. And in Alabama, people here are lining up not to shop, but to show up for court, with county courthouses now open for business. And this weekend, dozens of malls will once again open their doors to mixed reaction from shoppers. I think we're all antsy and anxious to get out for really any reason. Elsewhere, the call to remove restrictions is growing louder. In both Ohio and Indiana, protesters took to the streets to demand local leaders end shelter-in-place mandates. Tensions are rising among essential workers who say their employers just aren't doing enough to protect them from the coronavirus. And as we enter another month into this crisis, the rent is due and millions won't be able to pay it. All across the country, from Los Angeles, Philadelphia to New York, tens of thousands of tenants banded together in the largest coordinated rent strike in decades. Frustration and fear mounting for essential workers whose jobs have become more critical during the coronavirus pandemic. Employees staged sick outs Friday, coinciding with International Workers Day, calling out companies like Target, Whole Foods, Amazon and FedEx for more personal protective equipment and hazard pay. Amazon, which also owns Whole Foods, released a statement. We have invested heavily in their health and safety through increased safety measures and the procurement of millions of safety supplies and have invested nearly $700 million in increased pay. I am appalled. Healthcare workers also took to the streets. Nurses demanded better protections, saying they're being forced to work without policies ensuring their health and safety on the front lines. If the nurses are not safe, 
then the patients are not safe and the community is not safe. And inside meat processing plants required to stay open under the Defense Production Act, a new CDC report shows that 3% of workers in more than 100 facilities tested positive for COVID-19. Labor unions say employees need high quality protective gear and plants must be reconfigured for social distancing. The balancing act between safety and staying open, testing companies like never before. Any business is better than no business, but it's very complicated economically. For any business, big or small, the key is planning. And here's what we do not know. When exactly can all of these businesses open? Will customers come back? Will employees come back? What are all the new public health rules all these businesses will have to adhere to? And then last, is the supply chain fully functioning so you can actually do that business? Without knowing any or all of that information, it's going to be very hard to tell if businesses can function, and even if they can, at limited capacity, like 25 or 50 percent, there's very few businesses with margins big enough to survive on that.